The winter months can bring beautifully smooth, dense air that truly makes flying enjoyable. Unfortunately, the same cool temperatures that make the air smooth can also present various challenges to pilots of all general aviation aircraft. Extra care must be taken to ensure that the aircraft is safe to fly, and this usually means spending extra time outside in the elements. So dress appropriately for the cold temperatures. Keeping your aircraft properly maintained is the first step to ensuring the aircraft is ready to fly. Have your AME specifically check the cabin heating system before the cold weather sets in. Any cracks in the system can allow carbon monoxide to enter the cabin, and since carbon monoxide cannot be smelled, it's a serious threat to the safety of your flight. Also be sure to keep an up-to-date carbon monoxide detector in the aircraft. Although always a critical component of a safe flight, a walk around is especially important when the weather hits, particularly if the aircraft is left outside or in an unheated hangar. Frost, ice and snow can easily make their way into places where they shouldn't be. The engine breather tube is often not checked as part of a standard visual inspection. In fact, many pilots are unable to show where it's located on their aircraft. Should the breather tube be blocked with freezing moisture, it can result in a loss of engine oil. Talk to your AME about how to properly inspect the breather tube and any other aircraft specific equipment that you're not familiar with. Be careful to inspect all the critical surfaces, especially the hinges and cables on the control surfaces to ensure they have full and complete uninhibited movement. Remember that the cars mandate that all critical surfaces are to be free of contaminants. Even a thin layer of frost is not allowed and must be removed prior to flight. The braking system is especially prone to malfunction while operating in colder temperatures. The wheel pants, although nice to look at, are difficult to inspect underneath and can easily become filled with snow and ice. The fuel system of a typical light aircraft is usually fairly simple. However, it's also prone to failure if not understood and inspected properly. Pay extra attention to the fuel caps, ensuring that they're not bent or damaged, allowing water and other contaminants to enter the fuel tanks. If they're vented caps, make sure they're not blocked by ice that could prevent them from being able to do their job in the event the fuel vent becomes blocked. If there's water in the tanks, be extra vigilant to ensure it's completely removed. Even a small amount of water entering the fuel line and freezing can completely cut off the engine's fuel supply. Finally, a cold soaked engine is not fit to be started. Any engine that has been exposed to temperatures below minus seven degrees Celsius, including the wind chill factor, should be thoroughly preheated. Consult your POH for specific recommendations from your aircraft manufacturer. Preheating will ease the starting process, but it also helps to prevent unnecessary wear and damage to the engine. If the engine is started without being properly preheated, the oil can congeal, preventing proper flow throughout the engine. If a heated hanger is not available, an electric low voltage preheat system is the next best option. A low voltage system that heats both the oil sump as well as the engine cylinders, along with a thick engine cover or blanket can adequately heat the engine to proper pre-start temperatures. Although this method takes a long time to be effective, if you plan ahead and plug the aircraft in the night before your flight, it will ensure the airplane is ready to start when you arrive. One last option is to use an external blower type engine heater. This, however, is the most abused method of preheat as the engine is often only superficially heated. Be careful not to heat just the cylinders. The heat should be directed to the engine sump and lines as well as the cylinders. A superficial application of preheat can result in engine damage. It may be enough to get the engine started, but it will not decongeal oil in the sump or lines and a lack of lubrication may result which can cause a complete engine failure shortly after the application of a high power setting. Above all, don't be in a rush to get airborne. Take your time to do things right and ensure your aircraft is truly airworthy. And that way, you'll be better able to enjoy the smooth, dense air of the winter months.